In this video, we will be demonstrating the proper installation techniques for the OpsCore Raillink system, as well as showing you how to attach several accessories to this exciting new platform. Let's get started. The first step is to remove the old rail system from the helmet. We'll do that by removing the bolts at the front and back of each rail. There are a couple things we need to do before we mount the rail link system to the helmet. First, we want to loosen the sizing bolts at the back so that there is some play in the system and it doesn't fit too tightly on the helmet initially. The hash marks above the sizing bolts correspond with different size helmets. The smallest hash mark roughly corresponds to a medium, the next hash mark a large, etc. If sizing for an extra large or double extra large helmet, be sure to swap out the sizing screws with the longer sizing screws included with rail link. Next, we want to shape the flex cables properly so that they will sit nicely inside the rails once rail link is mounted to the helmet. Properly shaping the flex cables will help avoid pinching them between rail link and the helmet. Gently push down on the cables on both sides, being careful not to flatten them all the way down and create creases in the cables. There, now we've got the flex cables situated properly with a nice shape to each side without creasing them. You want to make sure that the cables are routed within the channels before you place rail link on the helmet. By doing this vertically, you reduce the chances for the cables to droop down and get pinched between rail link and the helmet. Gently push the cables in place and we can begin to mount rail link to the helmet with the proper length ballistic bolts for the fast helmet you're mounting rail link to. Insert the bolt through the rail link system and through the helmet shell into the retention system T-nut. Start with the rear bolt and just get the thread started. We don't want to tighten them all the way down. Then we'll move to the next set of bolts and repeat the process. In some cases, you do need to be careful as sometimes the bolt lengths are different between the front and back. For the front, we will repeat this process, inserting the ballistic bolt into the T-nut in the retention system. The trick on the front is to get the bolts through the helmet and then insert the fit band into the correct slot for the desired size. Once you have that done, line it all up and get the thread started from the outside, but don't tighten them all the way. Repeat the process on this side. Push the bolt through and then get the fit band in the right location. Install your T-nut and get the thread started on your ballistic bolt like the others. We are now going to tighten the adjustment screws on the back to ensure rail link is centered on the helmet. We're going to make small adjustments on each side until the screws are properly torqued. Rail link is now nicely centered on the helmet. And finally, after that, we will torque down the front and rear ballistic bolts. For the Surefire HL2 flashlight, the first thing to do is flip up this tab. Take a small tool and gently pry up this module to reveal the mounting screw. Line it up with the front node and tighten down the first screw. The trick here is you insert it at an angle, front part first, then you tip it downwards and then lock up. And screw down the rear screw, making sure you don't over tighten. Now we will mount a Princeton Tech Switch MPLS to the right side, tightening the screws like we did on the other side. The Princeton Tech does not have a particular order of which screw to tighten first, but again, be sure not to over tighten. Now we will move to the rear. And here is the core survival strobe. The unit with the IR Viz selector is mounted on the right node, while the unit with the 0, 1, 2 on off switch is mounted on the left. Careful again not to over torque. And on the left hand side is the on off switch. Tighten down the screws again, always being careful not to over torque them. Now it's time to mount the battery pack to the rear of the helmet. And what I'm going to do is open up the top and install six AA lithium batteries. The battery pack is designed to operate with all batteries facing up. You don't have to do your alternating up and downs like you might be used to. You can tighten down the top cap now, but don't tighten it all the way because there is also a secondary lock on it. 
We'll get to that in just a minute. To install the battery pack, you put the bottom hooks in first, tilt it forward into place, then tighten the rear screw all the way. Then you can tighten your top screw down completely as the secondary lock. This is your master on-off switch, which we will push to the on position. For the VAST cable, the first thing is to take the dust cover off. Then align the dots to orient the connector. Turn on the core survival strobe by moving the switch to one for low, two for high, and zero for off on the left side. To transition between IR and visible modes, move both switches on the right side to IR or vis. Here is our Princeton Tech Turn on with one short press for IR low, two short presses for IR high, one long press for visible low, followed by a short press for visible high. Turn off with a short press following mode selection and our Surefire flashlight. I hope this demonstration was helpful in effectively demonstrating the installation and operation of the Railink system. Stay tuned for more videos.